What's up family? How you guys doing today? I did here with Milky Tech and today we are upgrading my computer. We are going from the stock Wraith cooler on my 2700X to this Cooler Master Liquid Master AIO. Let's go from this to this. guys haven't seen the unboxing for this uh, AIO the link will be right here and guys if you enjoy this kind of content smash that like and hit that subscribe and guys remember all links for everything that I'm using will be in the description below now the stock cooler is a decent cooler however I want to squeeze out some more performance out of my CPU and with idle temperature at 35 40 degrees Celsius I think that's pretty unacceptable hopefully this AIO will bring it down to so around 30 degrees Celsius would be great. And hopefully we won't be hitting the maximum temperature for the CPU, which is around 80 degrees Celsius. So that will give us some more performance to squeeze out. And hopefully we can hit 4.3 gigahertz. So let's get to it and install this AIO. So the first thing that we have to do is remove the old CPU cooler. Now, the first thing I like to do is always unplug uh, the fan cable. And I love AMD's mounting system. It's so simple. You just have to press this lever over here. And now it is basically released. Now it's like a clip system. So you have to remove the mounting hardware off the clips to remove the CPU cooler. And it's super simple. Just push down and push out. And that's it. And you do the other side as well. One eternity later. Sometimes you need to elicit the help of a screwdriver. And who you can see all the discoloration. This this cooler has been working overtime. Our next step is to clean off all of the old thermal paste off of the CPU. And what I like to use to clean off the CPU is 91% rubbing alcohol. Good old isopropyl alcohol. Scrub dub dub scrub. Scrub dub 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 scrub. After we finish cleaning it, what I like to do is head to a little compressed air to remove any kind of residue or any kind of like lint or anything off of the CPU. And this is the kind of surface that we want to see, a nice clean surface with no thermal paste or any kind of lint or anything on it. So that when we put our new thermal paste and our new uh, cooler on it, the new thermal paste will adhere well to the CPU and the CPU block. Now that the CPU is prepped, let's take the computer off the table and get the AIO ready and prepped to install in the computer. So either you can have it installed where the radiator is on the top side of the case, or you can have it in the front of the case. Either way is fine. Now, one thing you wanna keep in mind when you're installing an AIO, you don't want to have your CPU block as the highest point. If it is the highest point, air bubbles will gather in the CPU block and that will reduce cooling performance tremendously. You will have overheating problems. Now, for my case, I'm not going to be able to install it in the front like the way I want to. I don't think I will be able to because the CPU block will be the highest point in this loop. So the way I'm going to do it, I'm just going to put it on the top of the case like so. We don't want to have any air bubbles affecting performance. So first thing we want to do is install the fans on the radiator. The best way to install the fan is to make sure that the fans are bringing cool air from outside over the fins to the inside. And then we'll have an exhaust fan exhausting all of hot air out. And the fans are directional and they have arrows telling you which way air flows. So air flows from this side out. So the way we will have to install the fans is like so, bringing air from outside in. In our goodie bag, let's go find our screws. And here are our screws. I love thumb screws. I love that these fans have little rubber padding. This helps with uh, sound dampening and vibration dampening. Our next step is to install our AMD mounting uh, solution. What I like about AMD's mounting solution is that we don't have to replace the motherboard backplate, which is awesome, it's less work. So this is the AMD mounting solution. What we wanna do is put this up here and then screw it in from the bottom. So let's bring the computer back and mount the radiator. Our next step is to remove the fans from up here since this is where we're going to mount our radiator on the top side of the case. 
Our next step is to mount our radiator. I like to start with my cable management, just trying to fish these cables out from here. This way they're not in our way. And now let's put a couple of screws to hold this guy down. It's time for a trusty old screwdriver. So our next step is to install our CPU block onto our CPU. But before that, I would like to wipe down the CPU one last time before I install the CPU block. Let's grab some IPA and just wipe it down one last time. And then hit a little bit air to remove any lint and any moisture. So now it's time to put our thermal paste. The chosen thermal paste I'm going to use is Arctic MX4. So the amount of thermal paste you want to put is about the size of a pea. Next, we want to remove our protective plastic cover over here. Always remove that. Nine times out of ten, if you're having an overheating issue when you install the new cooler, is you've probably forgotten this piece of plastic. And plastic does not conduct heat well at all. So let's remove it. And now let's install our water block. Put this down here. So the next thing we want to do, we want to connect our fans and we want to connect our CPU block to power. So we're going to use this Y splitter to connect them together and connect it to the main CPU fan port on the motherboard. Connect. Connect. And now we're going to run it through one of these cable holes. And this part is a little bit hard to show, but we're going to connect it to the top motherboard connector up here. And now let's connect the most important part the RGB. So electrical polarity matters with RGB light. You want to be able to connect them together where the arrow matches the arrow. And we must include these little cool things that they snap on to protect them from falling off. One of the RGB motherboard connectors is at the bottom, so we're going to route it to the back. To show you guys where I connected the cables, over here is where the RGB cable is connected, right here. And let's walk around here a little bit. And our CPU cables are over here. A little bit dark in that area. Let's see if we can shine some light in there. Okay, now that we have everything connected, let's see if it turns on. And it lives! And now for the fun part, cable management. So now let's run some benchmarks and see how, what kind of performance gain we got. All right, so we ran two different tests to benchmark this AIO. I ran a Prime 95 test using hardware monitor to monitor the temperatures, and I ran an IDA 64 Extreme test. And as you can see for our Prime 95 test, we see a significant difference in our idle temps before and after. Before we were at around 44 degrees Celsius. Now we're at 31 Celsius. And under full load, our temperature also decreased from 79 degrees Celsius to 
68 degrees Celsius. That is a huge improvement. And we see more of the same with our IDA 64 test, where our idle temperatures went from 43 degrees Celsius to 30, and our full load temperature dropped from 79 Celsius to 68 Celsius. That is a very significant drop in temperatures. Overall, we can see the performance gain that we saw with this cooler. Having a high quality cooler is very important. One being longevity of your CPU. The cooler it is, the longer it lasts. Plus, the cooler you get it, the harder you could push it, the more performance you will get out of your CPU. Heat is the number one killer of electronic components. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that like, hit subscribe, ring that bell so you get notified when I release my next video. If you guys have a question or have a comment or want to say hello, drop it in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.